to my uh, producer, Dieter Lacoste. This is Tanner Flood. What's up? Uh, Tanner Flood, who plays Brian in the film. Kedrick Salati, who plays uh, Anthony. And then, uh, a lot of you guys know this guy's really good. He's one of our executive producers. Alright, so we're going to have a Q&A with the cast and production team. Uh, I'm going to start it off tonight with a question for John, talking about, since it is inspired by true events, um, how that, uh, what percentage of that is with this story and how that came about? Uh, so, I mean, this is about my brother Anthony and I growing up and coming to the village of East Rockaway. And these are the friends we met. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we wanted to entertain the audience, so the drama is heightened and pushed um, to really maximize the entertainment value. So it's inspired by true events, but it's really just about the friendships and bonds. You know, um, growing up, I wanted to be, you know, smart like Brian. I wanted to be loyal and tough like Dom. I wanted to be funny and confident like Sal, and a leader like Billy. Um, and also, at the same time, independent like my brother Anthony. Um, so you're right what you know, and I always loved Stand By Me. So this is structured in that manner, and this is what I wrote. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a, another quick question here. Uh, as a personal story, how long was the screenplay when you started, and what was left on the floor? Uh, I think the first draft was 120 pages, so that's about two hours, a minute a page. Um, and then I realized I had a 25 minute long baseball scene that was unnecessary and so many things weren't happening. Um, but also I really, I didn't go to school for screenwriting or filmmaking, I went to school for visual effects and post-production. Um, so after writing the first draft, I then taught myself how to structure a proper screenplay. Uh, but the quick answer is 120. I think our shooting script was 96, and we're at about 85 minutes now. So 85 pages, 96 pages, 85 pages. And this question is for the cast. Tell us a little bit about what it was like working with John. Okay, working with John was probably one of the most magical experiences I've had in my career. He just had such just a visual for what he wanted this to be. From the moment he saw me, he knew just that I was Brian. I really felt that that was just a magical kind of thing for me, for him to see me and think, wow, this kid is just like one of the friends that I loved growing up. And that's really what it was for me, is just helping him make his dream come true. <laughs> Thank God he went first. Because um, now I get to say I, what he said. Um, no, I, I totally agree though. It was magic, it was great, it was fun, and it was actually one of the most fun sets, cast, director, it just entire thing that I've ever done in my career so far. So, that was nice. I, I, mean, I mean, you were. You were. So I obviously have known John for 20 plus years, and uh, how long, I mean, never being in a movie, you know, you were kind enough to have my brother and I in the scene, no one would recognize that, because after 20 years of knowing John, he cut my face out of one scene. <laughs> I was supposed to be in, only sees the back of my head. But uh, it was an experience, I definitely uh, got a little glimpse into what it takes to make a movie, so it was exciting to be a part of that. <laughs> I have one more thing to say about that. So him and his brother uh, are both Police officers. Billy's a captain in Williamsburg. Uh, your brother's a lieutenant now, right? And their father is a New York City detective, retired. And Matt and Billy came up to me, and their hair is perfectly done like this. And we're on set. We've got a fire truck and this and that. And he says, "You know, I'm not going to wear my hat." And I said, "Is that really how it would go down?" And him and Matt, with their slicked hair, perfectly like that. Yeah, that's how it would go down. So I went to Mr. Glenn Senior, and I said. Is this really the truth, or they just don't want to mess their hair up? And he gave me the straight answer, and you were right. No hat, you would run out to the fire. All right, we're going to open it up to the audience tonight. If you have a question, raise your hand, and this gentleman over here will bring you a microphone. Any questions from the audience? All right, top right. <laughs> No. 
<laughs> Great film, John. Thank you. From everyone in East Rockaway, thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> it's more of a comment. I just want to say that the young talent were phenomenal. And as a director, to get out the emotion from that, great job by everyone. Thank you. This film would not be uh, the powerful story it is without the six amazing uh, young men now <laughs> that we uh, we had in the, in the cast. Um, we would never made our shoot days without such seasoned, talented actors um, that you probably recognize from major shows. Um, I was lucky to have them. Uh, right there in the center. First of all, congratulations, John, everyone involved in the movie. Awesome. Was there a moment when you were making the movie um, when you thought it just might not come together, and how did you overcome that challenge? Hmm. You even answer? Yes, I think you have those. No, I mean, I had, I had worked a ton with, um, with young talents, and never at this uh, this length of shoot days. We had 25 shoot days. Um, I'm a very calm person, uh, so I think just every day was you know a different thing you had to tackle, and that's that's production. But I'm very I'm very very lucky in the sense that I have a, a 20 year background in visual effects and post production. So I knew that if something really terrible happened, I probably could find a solution very cheaply. Uh, and that's, you know, that's a, actually, you know, someone's here that I want to throw a shout out to is uh, uh, John Zawisha. We've worked together for 20 years. When I was 17 years old, he so graciously answered my questions and, and I learned about visual effects from him. Visual effects editor, we still work together for this today. Um, but it's made me calmer on set. I could find solutions and knew there would be a solution there because I would be the one fixing it for no additional budget increase. <laughs> Next question, uh, right here on the right side. Hey John, talk about East Rockaway and its 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 character in the film and, and like uh, why you chose it, obviously, and, and what what was the best part of it. Well, I mean, the, the backdrop of the village of East Rockaway, there's just so much texture there, and also, um, you know, when you're making a film with so much nostalgia, to go back to the place where you grew up um, is only going to enrich the final product. So, you know, being there, having the support of the village and everyone there, um, really every day was, you know, it, it, it helped us get through those grueling days. You know, everyone passing by that hadn't seen in years, and they'd say, oh, hey, John, you know, good luck, this is going to be awesome, and it really keeps you going. And those late nights when you're doing rewrites and you're on three hours of sleep and you've had ten cups of coffee and your hand's shaking, so you're typing four letters at the same time on the keyboard, um, it, was, it was important for me to film it there. Next question, uh, right up there on top. I just want to say, as a graduate of uh, class of '63, I mean, you you did it all. I mean, it was it was everything was compared so well. Uh, what does it? What do you take it from here, John? Um, well, I didn't do it on my own. We had a great team. <laughs> Uh, with the, the, the production and everything. Um, we are, when, this coming Wednesday and Friday, we are in Asbury Park, uh, screening there in a nice big theater like this. Um, so those are our next two screenings coming up. And then uh, we are talking to distributors for a much wider release that we feel the film uh, deserves. So, you know, if everyone, if you enjoyed the film, go on imdb.com, find Rockaway, you know, uh, rate us, follow us on our Facebook and social media, all that helps. Because the ultimate goal, and I think we're gonna get there by the end of the year, is to be streaming on all the major platforms, the Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, iTunes, all that jazz. And then I'm pushing for a uh, theatrical, some sort of